Hey everybody, Nequil here, and I'm bringing you another G-Code quick reference tutorial for Fanook Mills. So, today we are going to be covering G2 and G3 circular interpolation commands. So, for example, if you remember back to the G0 and G1, those were linear interpolation commands. Those moved in straight lines, and never anything but a straight line. These, however, will swing an arc or a circle depending on how you program it so with the g2s and g3s call these things called i's j's and k's and these are the uh they're like an extra set of, a uh, set of axes that you have to specify in order to tell the machine how to properly swing the arc so i can specify my x y and z which is where the radius is going to end and that's kind of similar to g1 it'll move to where i specify assuming my math is right because with g2 and g3 there's a lot of math involved because now you have these extra set of axes called your i's j's and k's and if you don't have those if those numbers don't match up mathematically the machine's going to error out and nothing's going to get done so you need to make sure that you have it set up properly so I'm just gonna go ahead and give you an example uh, in code real quick just so you can kind of see how it's written out and then we can start talking about this little grid here which is how we learned our I's J's and K's we're not gonna cover K's because once you learn I's and J's you're gonna pretty much understand what a K is cuz K is basically like swinging an arc up and down instead of around so imagine that you're drawing a circle on a piece of paper it's flat you just draw a circle that would be like your i's and j's if now imagine that you can lift up your pencil and when you lift it up it also draws but like in midair and then you bring it back down to the paper you're drawing an arc through the air and that would essentially be matching up with uh swinging an arc on your z and that's what your k is while your i's and j's match up to your x and y which would be on a flat plane on our proverbial piece of paper that's flat on a desk so let's just go ahead and get into it real quick and actually let me write down that example code I promised you so let me just make it a bit bigger so it's easy to see so let's say we are starting out at uh, actually here let's see let me just write something out. All right, so I got something written up here. Now, this is real basic, and I'll kind of split it up just so you it's a little bit easier to read. So these are all the components, more or less, that go into your uh, circular interpolation commands. Now, you'll note that there's no J there because we don't need it in this instance, and I'll explain why. So... This right here, if we imagine a little grid like you learned in math class where you know you have your x and y and then the grid that follows around. So th our cutter, in this case, let's say it starts out at x0, y0. And we're not going to worry about the z in this case. So, oh, that's a bit thick. Uh, all right. So... We're starting out right here, and that's where our cutter is right now. We want it to get over to here, which over here is our x2, y2. And we want to swing an arc over there, because let's say we're making a fillet or something, something to round off the edges so that the part isn't so sharp when it comes out of the machine. Um... So we want to swing an arc, and what this code is doing is allowing us to swing that arc because right here I'm specifying the endpoint. So I want to move to x2, y2 right here. But since it's a g2, I'm going to be swinging clockwise. Clockwise, remember, being this way. I'm going to swing clockwise this way. And it's going to be an arc because of these circular interpolation moves. 
but if I want to do that, I have to specify the center point of the circle, which would be right about here. Okay, so this right here is technically, uh, in this case, this would be x2, y0. We need to specify where the center point is so that the machine knows how big the radius is. So let's go ahead and draw our arc just so you can get an idea of what we're dealing with here. So because right here in the I column, this is essentially, this number is the exact same as the radius typically. Uh, it doesn't always match up to that because, uh, well, no, it's, no, okay, it won't always because sometimes the start point isn't going to be perfectly 90 degrees from either axis. It might be at an angle or something, and then you're going to have to start doing some confusing math. So we'll keep it simple for this case, and maybe at some point I'll have a video explaining uh, kind of advanced examples of G2 and G3 with trig and stuff. We're just going to keep it basic for now, just like in school. So, we want to get over there to specify our point. Now, you're thinking, oh, okay, well, if we're just specifying our radius, I know that that's two inches from the edge of the circle, so that's a two inch radius circle, so I can just put two inches but wait do i do i or do j well i can kind of point this out over here your i is basically your temporary x with your j being your temporary y and it's flipped as well so you're thinking oh okay well i'm moving positive in this direction to get to x2 to uh specify that I want I'm sorry I'm trying to figure out the best way to explain this um, so you can't just put a positive value there because it it matters because think of it less like you're specifying the size of the radius but more like you're pretending to move to that cutter to that radius but it's kind of flipped it's really weird how it works. So this is why I have an example down here. So in this case, uh, oh, oops, oops, yeah. I made a doo-doo. Don't pay attention to this minus. That is completely wrong. And this, this right here will explain it why. See, this is why it's so useful. I looked at it and I'm like, oh, that's right. I made a mistake so for example we'll go to our eye here our start point and right here this crosshairs represents the center of our radius so over here if my start point is at x negative 5 I have to move positively 5 inches this way in order to get to the center and that's what determines whether or not our eye is positive or negative it's what direction would I have to move in order to get to the center of it? So in this case, since I'm at x negative 5, I have to move positive 5 inches to get to that center. And since our i represents our x for specifying our center point with our g2s and g3s, I have to move positively to get to the center here. And then we can give an example with the j as well. Uh, so our y negative 1 right here, we need to move positive up in order to get to the center. So that would be j1. And uh, before you guys ask, uh, j and i, they don't mean anything. Like those are just placeholders. They are just... Uh, just remember them basically they don't actually mean anything so they're just unused letters for the most part so they use them for 
uh, circular interpolation and a couple of other things, but we'll get into that later. So if you get the basics of that, that's just moving in a straight line though. What if we need to swing an arc starting right here? We need to find the center point. Well, it kind of moves like a step, like it goes like this. For in this case, so you have to specify the two different numbers for the location. It's always, you basically always take the axis and you make it negative. Uh, you know, actually, no, D just completely disregard that. Just remember kind of how this is set up. We're always trying to move towards the axis, and we need to specify what the value would be to get there. So if I'm at positive x, I need to move negative to get to the center. So therefore, my i would be negative. And just like how my y is positive 2 in this case, I need to move negative 2 inches down in order, well, 2 inches down, which would be negative 2. But that's in the i, that's in my y, so that would be i negative 2 if I was at y positive 2, because I need to get to the center of my radius. If this makes any sense, I'm super happy about it. If it doesn't make any sense, please leave a comment, and I will try to explain it the best I can. It's kind of hard to understand uh, sometimes, and I'm probably not doing that great of a job explaining it, but hopefully... This will be adequate enough for somebody who kind of knows what's going on. So th these are more to act as a refresher anyways. So if I if this, my start point for my circle is at x2, y2, I need to specify that the center is uh, j negative 2, i negative 2. This is, this does not, this is an example where the center of our circle is zero, zero. That is definitely not always the case. And I can give you an example in a little bit here. But we'll just go back to this real quick. And so you can see that since this right here is zero, zero, and we want to swing an arc to x2, y2, and we want the radius of the arc to be two inches, we need to write out the code like this, which would be G2, our endpoint right here, and then our center point, and then our feed rate. Now, just like G1, it needs a feed rate. Uh, so, um, so yeah, so this is our endpoint. This is our radius, and then this is our feed rate right here. And then this also means this G2 is clockwise. So remember that. That's super important. You can't put a G3 here. Otherwise, it's going to do this. It's going to go all the way around like this. It's going to swing a giant arc. So I'll, I'll draw it over here. It's going to move clock or counterclockwise. So it's going to do this. And that might not be what we want to happen. So, <laughs> uh, and that can really screw up your things. And it's it's funny with G-Code that one misplaced number can completely screw everything up. So you have to be really careful. It's like most programming. Except the problem with G-Code programming is that if you're doing it on an actual machine and you mess up, you just damage the machine, typically. And that's a really expensive machine. A spindle alone for your average CNC mill might range from 30 to 70 grand. And so it's pretty important that you double-check your code and you make sure that everything's working good. You run it through a program like Veracut to make sure it's not going to do any weird stuff. <clears throat> so right so this right here is on the x we need to move over to x two inches and since we're moving we can imagine that this x2 y0 is now our zero zero here so that would place our start point over here we need to move in the positive direction to get to the center 
of that radius. So therefore, that's two inches away from our start point. So we would put I2 because it's on the X. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. That is... Uh, uh, it's real tricky. Hopefully I can, I'll do a video later, maybe on kind of the advanced section of this, where we'll do a few examples where we will start at weird locations, at angles, we'll do all the math and everything. But this is just kind of the basics. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as fast as I can. If not, thank you everyone for watching. And I will see you next time.